All right, man, peace. So one of the main storylines that brothers have been asking me to cover over the last few months has been this Nas Khalees narrative. And thus far, I've left it alone for the most part because we've only really heard from one side, that being Khalees, who had that very infamous sit-down interview with the homosexual man on Hollywood Unlocked. I left it alone because, as I want to do, I like to let the dust settle. Because it's only after the dust settles that we can make an accurate appraisal. I was also giving Nas a chance to finally speak out, which he eventually did a couple of weeks ago. So I said, okay, cool. Now that now this is the right time to utilize this storyline as a backdrop for brothers. Because at the end of the day, brothers, once again, this is not a gender war channel. And I'm not going to make a video taking Nas's side just because he's a so-called black man. As a matter of fact, as I stayed incessantly on this channel and a lot of dudes who happen to be weak don't like this. But I hold the so-called black man to a higher standard of propriety. Why is that? Because if we call ourselves kings, then we have to utilize discernment. We're not going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. None of y'all out there are perfect. But to constantly be trying to go back and forth with the black woman, that's kind of productive. Because once again, the woman, <laughs> the woman is just a child with breasts. And we're supposed to be the head of the woman. We're not supposed to be caught up going back and forth with the woman all day. That's, that's a waste of time. So anyway, we're going to let Khalees give her rendition of the situation. And thereafter, we're going to view things from Nas's perspective. And we're going to analyze and deduce exactly what the issue is here. Not necessarily who's quote-unquote right or who's quote-unquote wrong. We're going to use this as a backdrop so that when brothers are faced with these situations... They may have a better understanding of what to do and what not to tolerate, not only from the woman, but also from themselves. So let's see what happens here. So, so, let's, so let's go back, because before we started this interview, what I love about Hollywood Unlocked, we, people trust us to ask whatever questions we want. We don't get censored. I asked you, what can I ask you or not ask you? And you said something interesting about being edited. What did you say? I said, I have edited myself for nine years and... I woke up this morning and was like, not today. Well, let's keep one thing in mind. The reason why Khalees has quote unquote edited herself for the last nine years is because for the most part, she's been getting everything that she's wanted from Nas. She's been getting the money. She, for the most part, has had sole custody of their son because Nas lives a certain lifestyle. He likes to jet set. He likes to lay down with various strange women. And engage in all types of hijinks that are consistent with being a higher level member of the entertainment industry. He has not made many demands of Khalees that would necessitate her making things public. For the most part, they have a dynamic where Nas has been forced to suffer in silence because she knows his personality relatively well. She knows that he's very image conscious, especially due to the quote unquote pro black slash black consciousness slash love the black woman mentality or vibration that he's put out into the atmosphere over the last 15 years or so. So she knows that Nas is not someone who wants to go back and forth in the media, so she's been able to bully him in private. But due to the fact that Nas has finally understood that he has to utilize the system, and most importantly that he cannot allow himself to be marginalized by someone who's supposed to be assisting him in raising their child. Because he's finally realized that, now that has made her very uneasy because once again, the modern liberal black female has become so accustomed to being the sole proponent and the sole utilizer of the, of the judicial system that when the so-called black man utilizes it against her, she becomes very discomforted, <laughs> as the scriptures would say. So how long ago, so when did you guys get married? What year was that? Uh... What was it, 2002 or three? Now she wants to act as if she cannot even remember when they got married. Let me say this, brothers. Not only does she remember the year that they got married, she remembers the month, the day, and the time. She remembers all that. But she has to act as if she cannot remember what year they got married so that she can once again try to marginalize Nas. It's very obvious that... Nas had no idea what he was getting into 
and most simps have no idea what they're getting into. That's why I say I'm not interested in the gender war or the blame game. Because it's incumbent upon the man to know better. And when you know better, you're supposed to do better. We have to hold ourselves to a higher standard. That's going to force the so-called black woman that so many brothers like to go back and forth with all day. It's going to force them to raise their standard of conduct. And if not, then they get put by the wayside. Problem solved. It's very simple. So many brothers cause themselves unnecessary anxiety by stressing over how the so-called black woman conducts herself. The woman in general is going to follow power. She's going to follow prestige. Whoever is in power is who she's going to follow. So you should not be concerned with the woman. You have to be concerned with higher things. Once the woman sees that you're not going to follow her, it's going to put her in the position where either her disrespect or disregard for your authority is going to become glaring and she's going to embarrass herself or she's just going to have to say to hell with it. I'm going to go for the gusto. I'm going to go full-fledged into following the true leaders of this society and I don't care how bad it makes me look. I've stated this in another video. Right now the liberal black woman plays the proverbial free safety. She gets to just hang out in the middle and pick what side she wants to take. The racialist angle, the globalist angle, or the feminist angle. Whichever one provides her with the greatest opportunity to receive shine. And the so-called black man has to put the so-called black woman in a position where she has to choose him. And when you don't put that level or that onus on the black woman to do that, she's going to continue to do what what she's been made to do, which is cause chaos. The woman in general is the agent of chaos. So if you don't put restrictions on the woman, she is going to utilize that chaos aspect. Ish, like in that space, yeah. Because we got we got married before our wedding, so we were already married by the time we before like, you had the ceremony and all that. Yeah, like and the green way trans, before that. And that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so when you all got married, was was everybody as in love with you all as a couple then as they are now, or is it now more like? Probably not. It's become more iconic or something. I mean, my mom definitely was not. <laughs> Your mom didn't. Now, brothers, did you hear that? Galee stated that her mother did not approve of her relationship or her marriage with Nas. Now, there are many reasons why a mother may not approve of the relationship that her child has with someone else. Sometimes it's because the mother believes that that other person is not good for her child. Sometimes the mother understands that her child is not good for that person. And that does happen. Sometimes the mother will know that her child, whether, whether her child be a daughter or a son, is not a good person. <laughs> and if their child happens to bring home a person who's good, sometimes the mother will warn the other person, look, my child is a handful. Sometimes mothers know. But in this situation, what do I think is the reason why Khalees' mother disapproved of Nas? Because I think that Khalees' mother understood that not only is her child wild, but Nas was someone who was trying to be wild. He's an introvert who grew up in a wild environment and was not very sure of himself. And, and to a certain degree, I still don't think that Nas is very sure of himself in regards to who he is. I do believe Khalees when she states that Nas was very image conscious. I believe that I get that vibe from him as well. That he was someone who was caught up in trying to keep up with the Joneses, no pun intended. As opposed to just being comfortable with the fact that he has a certain niche. And not trying to act as if he was going to go out there and sell 10 million albums and things of that nature. So I could see that. And of course, it was very obvious that their relationship was going to flame out. Because Nas does not understand women at all. He doesn't understand women at all. And he put himself in the position where he allowed a quote-unquote serious relationship to develop with a certifiable man-hater. That's what he did. So I blame him. I don't blame her. Khalees was 21, 22 years old when they started quote-unquote dating. It's up to him as a man to understand exactly what he's dealing with. He was relatively young himself. Probably about 27, 26, however old he was. But still, it's incumbent upon him to be able to lead the woman. So his father should have taught him something. And I believe that that's the source of a lot of Nas's problems. Was his father not teaching him correctly about the nature of the woman? 
Once again, brothers, you have to train your sons, man. You have to train them on a lot of these pitfalls in this society. No, she didn't, but I think it was because she saw it was like we were going to crash and burn, which we did. So, thanks, Mom. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I think it was such a different era, though. Like, things now have become so, like, like we came in on the cusp when things were still real. Like, things were, you know what I'm saying? Like, there was still, like, a grit and, like, a grind and a hustle and, like, a... You didn't have social media and yeah, all the super. Yeah, there was a rawness to, to everything about that era that doesn't exist now. So it was, it was, a, everything was different. You know what I mean? How people responded to us. Well, things were not really that different. You just feel like they were different because you were younger. People always feel like their era was so drastically different. The nature of people really doesn't change. It's just their environment may be changed through social engineering. Social media has changed how people view themselves. It's changed how they cultivate their image. So back then in the early 2000s, you had to be signed to a record label for people to know you. Now you can go on social media and garner a following. So social media has given an outlet for people who are talented to express their talent in a different way as opposed to being cultivated by a record label. So the environment has changed a bit, but I would say that for the most part, the people are still the same as they were 15, 20 years ago. It's really no different. Industry hoes today are the same as industry hoes 20 years ago. Khalees would know for a fact about that. Different. Um, I think like, you know, I was, and I think people forget this too, like, when him and I got married, I was already, like, on my third album, you know? So people very conveniently forget that. Like, I wasn't made by anybody, you know what I mean? Like, I had already, I had, I was already critically acclaimed. I already won award. Critically acclaimed by who? Your mother? Give me a break. What you were was a very strange-looking, extremely tall, so-called black woman who constantly sang off-key and was trying to fit into the hip-hop industry you got put on by Pharrell Williams. You were an industry shmang out. Everybody knew about you, Khalees, allegedly. Everybody knew about you. You used to roll with Eve. You were a pansexual. That's how you got in contact with Nas and many other rappers in the first place. Everybody knew how that went down. Once again, brothers, all these top quote-unquote starlets and singers that you see on television, they're all smang outs. In order for them to get tracks, in order for them to get put on television, they have to do all types <laughs> of freaky deaky just to get on television. That's just how it goes. It is what it is. People could talk about how talented they are and how gifted they are. Yes, you need a certain level of talent in order for you to pop with the public. But do you know how many talented people there are out there? The true element that distinguishes a star from someone who never makes it, who's also talented, is what that star is willing to do. To ingratiate themselves with the culture of the industry. So whenever you see somebody on television, the bigger the star they are, the bigger the whore they are. And that's both the men and the women. That's both the men and the women. The bigger the star they are, the bigger the whore they are. Not just physically, but spiritually. So I was already doing what I was doing, so it wasn't about like... You know, it was really. You already we, made a name in your own. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, it, and off the strength of myself, before him and I ever, ever met, we we fell in love. We really did, and we fell quickly. You know, so, and because in if we're similar in any way, it's that we're both like shut out the world, and we're both really good at that. Now, brothers, did you hear what she stated? She said that they fell in love, and they fell very quickly in love. Now, I have a series on my channel about should men fall in love? Of course, the answer is no. Why is that? Because all falling in love is, is a form of idolatry. It's a form of worship of that other person. Particularly the man falling in love with the woman. You're not supposed to do that. The man is supposed to be in love with higher things. Things that can feed him spiritually and that are going to be consistent. Now, a man, in his essential nature, is supposed to be consistent as well. The woman by nature is going to be capricious and whimsical. So she's going to become obsessed with things and then quote unquote fall in love and fall out of love with things. The man cannot afford to conform to that paradigm or he will end up in a bad stead. 
And oftentimes that's why you see simps become so miserable because they've allowed themselves to be dictated to in regards to the dynamics of the relationship with the woman. And then what they find out is that the woman is constantly changing on them. And in order for them to assist the relationship in maintaining, they have to emasculate themselves. This happens to many men out there who call themselves quote unquote husbands. A lot of these men who conform themselves to the marriage dynamic in this society, they're miserable because they never know <laughs> they never know who's going to come through that door in regards to their wife. But just pay attention to what she stated. She said they fell in love very quickly. In other words, what? Within one or two months, they were trying to push that high school romance mentality. You can't have that. Love is about loyalty and sacrifice. Being in love is an unhealthy infatuation with something. You could be in love with anything. You could be in love with drugs. You could be in love with material items. You could be in love with a person. That's never, ever healthy. Now, when you love something, that means that you understand the balance that needs to be there. Your mother or father love you. They're going to tell you things that nobody else is going to tell you for your benefit. Your significant other loves you. They're going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. When people are in love, oftentimes they're in a haze. It's like someone who has tried a certain drug for the first time. It's not healthy. So... We like hibernated and it was just him and I for a long time. And, you know, and that was better. I think it's when people, you know, and opinions and, and everything else that came that it started to. It wasn't good ever, but it, it, it definitely progressively got worse. Wait, so the relationship was never good? Um, we had like really intense highs and really intense lows. You know, it was. never. In other words, Nas was not mentally or spiritually stable enough to bring stability to the relationship. Once again, brothers, it's up to you to provide stability to the relationship because the woman is not going to do that. And she's really not supposed to do that. The woman is here as a helpmeet for you. She's not here to bring all types of mental stability to you as a man. Now, if you're blessed enough to find a woman on that level who's that strong, that's great. But you cannot expect that from the woman. You're supposed to have your shit together, man. That's why I state two brothers. You should not be initiating a serious relationship with a woman until, you, until you're until you near where you want to be. You should have a stable apartment, home, etc. A lot of you guys are still living at home or you don't even really have a job where you could support yourself. And you're out there trying to find a girlfriend. You're setting yourself up for embarrassment, man. That's all you're doing. You can't count on the woman to be the same person tomorrow that she was today i've stated this in another video that's why in ancient cultures the woman was always likened unto the moon because the moon looks different every night man that's how the woman is so you have to be stable-minded you have to bring that stability so that when the woman changes you already have predicted it you've already seen it so it's not a shock to you it doesn't throw you off it doesn't destabilize you nas allowed himself to fall in love because he was looking for a replacement for his mother. And that also is very unhealthy. Or like, it was never normal. So what would, a high, what would an intense high look like? An intense high would be like, money was rolling in. We were like, we were young too. Like people don't, I was like. I now brothers, did you hear the first thing that she stated? When the homosexual interviewer asked her, what did the high look like? She said money was rolling in. She didn't say, oh, we were loving each other so well. It was so good. We were comforting one another. We were there for one another. We were supportive. She said money was rolling in. That's why you have to listen to what people say. For you brothers in these so-called relationships with these women, you have to listen to what they say. Because they will reveal a lot. They will let you know how seriously you should take them. But the main thing for brothers is to take themselves seriously. When you take yourself seriously, you're going to force everyone around you to take you seriously. And you're going to take them seriously. I cannot stress that enough. Your life and what goes on in your life, the energy in your life, a lot of it is based off of what you established from the jump, man. It's up to you. 
was 22 when I met him. I was a baby, so like we, we were drinking too much, smoking too much. We were too much. We were too much. We were spending too much. I mean, we were falling out of control. Like it was, it was all just too much. And like we were, we lived hard, you know. And so because of that, like when that comes down, it goes really low. <laughs> like, in other words. Nas was trying to fulfill her fantasy of being the so-called intelligent thug. <laughs> Once again, you could never allow the woman to establish or dictate what her prototype of a dream man is supposed to be. That's why in strong cultures or in the ancient world, the woman's father told her who she was going to marry. That's what he told her. He said, this is who you're going to marry. Because if you allow the woman to determine <laughs> who she's going to marry, you're going to have a damn 99% divorce rate, man. <laughs> That's why they had to come up with irreconcilable differences as a divorce parameter. Because all that really means is, I don't feel like being with his ass anymore. That's, <laughs> That's all that means. They came up with that for the woman. So, you brothers, a lot of times, you allow the woman... To run along with these flights of fancy in regards to what type of man they want. And Nas was trying to fulfill that role. Of being the degenerate, intelligent thug. And that shit gets very old very quickly. Especially as these females get older. As I tell you brothers all the time. That time period of the woman being in her 20s. It's a foolhardy time period for them. Because they're, they're really just trying to see how many dicks they could sample. So by the time they're in their late 20s, they're a different person than they were in their early 20s. Now they're looking for the more stable-minded dude, at least allegedly. That's if they're actually starting to understand things to a certain degree. But they're still, of course, foolhardy and narcissistic. But of course, she started to realize that Nas was not the person that she wanted anymore. It doesn't mean that she was healthy, but at the same time, once again... That's why you never try to live up to the woman's understanding of what a man should be. You have to live up to the Most High's understanding of what a man is supposed to be. So that no matter what happens, you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm doing the right thing for me. And that's what matters. A lot of these cats end up depressed and bugged out of their mind because they try to constantly make the woman happy. You cannot make the woman happy, man. You cannot make the woman happy. The woman has to be happy already. You have to make the most high happy. The woman's happiness is supposed to come from your happiness. So you have to generate happiness from within yourself. You can't be running around, oh man, let me do this for her so that she's happy or that for her so that she's happy. Of course, you do good things for your woman. That's what you're supposed to do. But at the same time, you can't go through life worrying about how happy she's going to be over every little thing or how mad she's going to be, man. You got to worry about what... <laughs> What's going to make the most high happy? Because you could be the best so-called husband in the world. Come home early from work and the UPS guy banging out your, <laughs> banging out your woman. Man. <laughs> oh, man. As low as possible. So it's hard, you know, because there's no balance. There's no, like, normalcy. And I think, you know, to our credit, Nas got famous really young. And I signed my first deal at 17. We were really young, you know, and like, just there were so many things against us, like beyond all the other personal stuff and all the stuff that, that went wrong with us. Like, if you look at it on paper, like it was hard anyway, you know what I mean? Like, and then we were in the public eye and then the kind of artist that we were, you know, he was no pop star. I was no pop star. Like we were artists. Like it was tumultuous and toxic so often because it was it's like this it was this constant like i don't know like this which i didn't let me help you out Khalees. the conflict that you guys had was that you were too liberal and he was trying to be liberal alongside with you what do i mean by that she was not trying to live her life according to conventional rules or the gender role dynamic and he was trying to be super liberal black guy talking about how great his wife was and she could do whatever she wants and I'm gonna do whatever I want and that always leads to conflict 
that always leads to conflict. Once again, brothers, if you have no idea how things are supposed to be, if you let the woman establish what the modes of, of propriety are going to be, the shit is not going to work, man. You have to come into the relationship understanding how things are supposed to be. Because all that, get up at 1 p.m. and stay up until 5 a.m. and get drunk and high every night, that shit gets old real quick. If you're somebody who actually intends on living a full life uh, with lucidity. If you're not lucid, what's the point of living life if you can't even remember what you did yesterday? So that shit gets real old. I'm not surprised that they clashed after a while. Because someone like her needed somebody calm to balance out her bullshit. And Nas, despite all his conscious bluster, he's a simp. I can't say that enough. He's a simp. That's why he always falls for these wild women, man. He was never taught by his father what the right type of woman was. And that's the major problem in the so-called black community amongst the so-called black men. He has no idea what type of woman to pick as a wife. And when I say a wife, I'm not talking about contractually. I'm talking about in regards to who to take seriously. The so-called black man keeps trying to turn a concubine into a wife. And that's the major problem that brothers have. I didn't tension. realize that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know that was going to happen. But the, the tension, what do you think um, created that? I mean, there's a lot of things. I think that I was really naive. Um, I was really naive. I was madly in love. And so I took a lot that I shouldn't have taken and that I generally just on my character it's not my character at all so i think it was all awkward it was are you talking like, about the infidelity that you know it's funny because someone asked me that was the straw that broke the camel's back but that that wasn't it i didn't file for divorce because he cheated he he'd been cheating for two years and i knew that it was because on top of all the other stuff then you're gonna cheat okay well, let's be for real. The main reason why you did not mind the cheating, or I should say, the cheating was not the primary reason why you left him, quote unquote, is because you were getting your share of side dick yourself. <laughs> That's the fact of the matter. Both you and Nas were living a very wild lifestyle. You were engaging in threesomes and things of that nature. So Nas thought that it would be okay for him to go out and have sex with different women. Maybe you were just doing your own side thing off GP. And just happened to find out that he was doing his own thing. Who the hell knows? Point being is this. By her own words, Nas's cheating was not the primary reason why they got a divorce. She says that's the quote-unquote straw that broke the camel's back. In other words, the translation for that is, that's the reason that I put out in the public in regards to why I finally left. Too much. Like, this is too much. And then it was really, it was really toxic. And... and I was pregnant, and so at you know seven months pregnant, I was terrified. I was like, I cannot bring a person into this. This is a freaking mess. Like this is a mess, and I can't control this. I gotta get out. So you left while you were pregnant? Yeah, I filed for divorce in April, um, and Knight was born in July. Wow. So that's interesting. She states that she filed for divorce in April, or she left in April, I should say, and her son Knight was born in July. As I've touched on before, in my view, it may be a possibility that one of the reasons why she fled from Nas so suddenly is because maybe the subject was broached that in order for their career to go up to another level, that maybe she would consider sacrificing the child at the behest of both Nas and her career. And she rejected that notion and she left. Once again, there are many issues that occur between quote unquote celebrities and Hollywood where people are never given the real reason. Sometimes you have to read between the lines. And once again, I say these type of things for the brothers who can comprehend it. Everybody can't grasp things on that level. But they do venerate and worship Baal in that industry. So it does seem strange that all of a sudden, at seven months pregnant, she says to herself, I have to get the hell up out of here. So I guess we'll never really know exactly why she made that decision. So what was an intense low? Like, what was the lowest point in your marriage? Um, <laughs> we had a lot. I mean, 
mean, honestly, like if I were to really tell the stories, I, I couldn't write. Like it was that crazy. Like it was dark. It was really dark. Like, you know, there was a lot of. That's interesting. Now, Khalees says she could not even write the story because it was that quote unquote crazy, that quote unquote dark. That's why I touch on the possibility for you few brothers out there that can understand things on that level. That could it be that the subject was broached, the topic was broached, that maybe they might want to consider sacrificing the child to get to that Jay-Z, Beyonce level of fame in Hollywood. Because there's no doubt in my mind that Nas at that point was very focused on Jay-Z. And particularly the Jay-Z, Beyonce relationship, I think that's one of the main reasons why he wanted to publicize his relationship with Khalees so much. Well, so that he could say, look, I'm in a superstar relationship as well. That's one of the things that Khalees touches on in this interview that I agree with. I do believe that when she states that he was in his own mind in a rivalry with Jay-Z. And that he was trying to push his relationship with Khalees as a counterbalance to Jay-Z's relationship with Beyonce. Drinking, there was a lot of just mental and physical abuse and it just got to the point where i think for me you know god is so good because being pregnant that's i think that i i probably would have stayed longer had i not been pregnant because i really did love him and because we were married we weren't dating we were married like this was my person you know and i really felt like did you feel he was your soulmate i did at the time i did i don't know that i now brothers did you hear what she said she said that or at least she answered the homosexual man's question when he asked her if she felt like Nas was her soulmate. She said that she did. But she spent the entire interview stating that the relationship wasn't good, that it was toxic, that they had nothing in common. So if Nas was such a bad person, but he's your soulmate, then what's that saying about you? <laughs> Once again, like seek of like. That's why I say I'm not taking any sides here. There are no victims here, only perpetrators. So, do I feel sorry in any way for Nas? No, I do not. He's a simp. Simps get what they deserve. That I believe, I believe in that now, but I don't know that that means it's right. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, it shouldn't hurt like that. So when you say um, verbal and physical abuse, he hit you. We would fight. So I'm not going to... Now, brothers, did you see how she responded to the question? Because even he wanted, to, wanted her to expound on the sentiment that they were getting into altercations. He asked her, you know, would he hit you? And she had to pause. She looked up and she said we would fight. In other words, what she's saying was that there was mutual combat. So for a woman to admit that, Basically, what she's saying is that for the most part, she was the initiator of the physical altercations. That's basically what she's saying. Because if there was ever a point where he was attacking her and being as physically abusive as she lets the public think, she would have been very, very explicit with it. And she would have given detailed accounts. But she purposefully tried to obfuscate because she knew that most of the physical altercations were caused by her. Never like just sat there but we would definitely fight so it's interesting in looking at um everything online trying to sort out the history because there's been so many years of your life before him your life with him your life after him there's not many interviews with you telling your story but there's so many descriptions of you on the internet it's out it's amazing it's how amazing. is that <laughs> i don't know man i always say like i i'm an easy target and i know that i am um and i was saying it earlier like you know i think well, it's funny. It's a few things. So the first thing is, my first song was caught out there, right? I was I was 18. I had no idea what that was going to do for my... I wanted to, to sing. I wanted to write. Like, that's all I cared about. I had no... Now, brothers, did you see what Khalees just did there? And I have to give her credit. Because the interviewer asked her, why are there so many statements out there about you in regards to you being someone who may be at fault or wild or... A wild card per se and immediately she went to her original hit song 
caught out there because she understands how that song makes her look. It makes her look like a man hater. It makes her look like someone who's going to seek vengeance. It's going to make her look like someone who's going to pursue physicality. So even she has the self-awareness to know how that song made her look. Unfortunately, Nas did not have the self-awareness to say to himself, why would I want to initiate a real relationship with someone who would make a song like that? That should have been the first thing that occurred to him. Why would I want to be in a real relationship with somebody like that? It's very obvious that she has man-hate issues for whatever reason. I'm not sure what her situation was growing up with her father or what have you, but that's something that brothers have to certainly be cognizant of. Is the woman that you're with, did she have a father in her life? How does she respect the masculine principle, things of that nature? You have to be aware of that. No idea what was going to happen. I didn't know how that was going to brand me. I had no clue. So that was the first thing. The second thing, I think, was because I, I didn't look like everybody else. I didn't talk like everybody else. I, there was a, you know, then it gets to the point where I don't even know what everybody else is doing. I have no idea. I'm totally oblivious. I'm just doing what I'm doing. That I think people started to, because I wasn't talking about it, people started to make up their own opinions. When I see stuff online or like things that people DM me, I'm always just like, that is so funny. They're like, crazy this. And I'm like, which, when was I crazy? Like, I, when? <laughs> now, brothers, let's keep in mind what she just asked. She just asked a hypothetical question. She said, when was I crazy? And she had an incredulous look on her face. Now, just to show you the amount of disassociative identity disorder that she suffers from. Remember that she asked, when was I crazy? And then listen to what she says subsequent to that hypothetical question. <laughs> well, there was something when Nas had talked about your separation where he, because a lot of what I have read of people talking about you has been from him. And so he said that, um, he said you were used to sleep with Harvard. What did that mean? Sleep with who? One of his, one of his <laughs> interviews, he said you went to sleep with Harvard. He kept referring to Harvard. I don't know if that was him referring to himself. I, I I have no idea what that means. Well, and then he went, on, he went on to say that um, basically your kids will find out later what happened. And so he left it kind of vague. What was that? Do you know? I mean, I know that in his mind, like, <laughs> I don't know if it's dementia or like, <laughs> maybe it's all the weed. I'm not sure. But his memory is definitely faulty. Mm -hmm. You know, listen, I this is for me. Now, brothers, I hope that you heard what she alleged there, because that's one of the main reasons why I tell brothers to stay off the weed, man. Because when you get into these issues with people, it provides them with plausible deniability in regards to being culpable for things that transpired. When they could say, well, this person's a weed head or they were drinking a lot or what have you. Whether people want to admit it or not, the connotation behind a weed smoker is that they're not the sharpest knife in the draw in regards to their mental acuity at that moment. So, of course, she's going to say that Nas is going to make a lot of these very strange accusations because he does not, quote unquote, remember what actually occurred or what transpired. So that gives her an out. It's not about like. I've waited nine years to say anything. I have never. I mean, you can look it up. I have never talked about this man. Ever. And. There was never a reason for you to talk about him. Because you were getting what you wanted. You left the man. You got with the new guy. He was giving you the checks that you wanted. That was that. You got to be the primary character. You got to be the primary caretaker for the child. So what was there to complain about until he threw a monkey wrench in the program by dragging you through the white man's court system? That not only made you look bad, but it made you feel impotent because you were accustomed to being the person who could go to the court system or to the legal system to rake him over the coals. So 
he switched the roles up and that really messed you up in the head. The amount of airing out that I could do, and I've chosen not to, our kids will find out. Mm -hmm. They're finding out now. Mm -hmm. And I've never painted myself as a saint. Mm -hmm. Did he hit me? Mm Mm-hmm. Did I hit him back? Mm Mm-hmm. Was it mutual (laughs) combat? Now, brothers, did you hear that? She said, I've never painted myself as a saint. And then she makes the allegation that he hit her and then she hit him back. Well, why would you say you're not a saint for hitting somebody back who was attacking you? Especially in this society, you're a woman. You would not have to say I'm not a saint for hitting somebody back. Because nobody would associate a woman defending herself from a man's attack as as something that was um, inordinate or uh, out of order in any way, lacking character. So it's very clear that when she said that she's not a saint, it's because subconsciously she was acknowledging that she was initiating most of the physical altercations. Because once again, if all she was doing was defending herself, she would have made that very clear. She would not have prefaced it by saying, I'm not a saint. Because defending yourself has nothing to do with not being a saint. Or was it you hitting him back because he hit you or what? It was because... He would black out. He would drink too much. He drank way too much. He drank way too much. Once again, she went to the he was drunk angle. The homosexual interviewer asked her a direct question. He said, were the physical altercations caused by anything in particular? Would he approach you or so on and so forth? And automatically she knew that she could not lie and say that he was hitting her first. So she went back to the he was drunk. He won't remember. That's what she's hoping for. She's hoping that she can make these allegations, or at least she was hoping that she could make those allegations and that maybe Nas would sit back and listen and say, well, damn, maybe I don't remember what happened. Shows you how insidious uh, the liberal female can be. That's why you have to be very careful. Very, very careful. He will never admit it. Um, But he drank too much. And... There are times when we would party and I would drink with him, but then he would keep drinking. And so a lot of the stuff I he may not remember. Once again, she's playing the he doesn't remember or he won't remember route. That provides her with plausible deniability. She said, well, there were many nights that I drank with him, but then he would keep drinking. Of course he would keep drinking because you were passed out. <laughs> you was passed out. You didn't have. The stomach for the liquor that he had. So it wasn't that he was a worse or a a more flagrant drinker than you. It was because you didn't have the tolerance that he had. She's trying to absolve herself. At the end of the day, she was ready for a lot of that fast life, that fast portion of her life to be over. And once again, to be quite frank with you, I suspect that there was certainly something afoot in regards to why she left him so suddenly while she was seven months pregnant. It would not surprise me once again if the topic was broached that something be done with the fetus. But there have been times when, like, literally we would have the worst, the worst night ever, like, the worst night ever. And we would wake up the next day and it's like it never happened. He just, like, never happened. So was he ever remorseful? He bought gifts. He bought gifts. Um, I love gifts, but <laughs> like after. Yeah, you love gifts and you love money. That's why when <laughs> when homeboy asked you to explain some of the high moments in your relationship, the first thing that you said was the money was flowing in. At the end of the day, you can play the victim role all you want, but you know what. <laughs> You know what, brothers, like I said, this situation is victimless. Neither one of them are victims. They're both perpetrators, and uh, it is what it is. It's just that brothers have to be very, very careful the situation that they allow themselves to get into. For a while, you're kind of like, you know, honestly, it's so crazy because I thought about this this morning because I, 
I don't think about this stuff often. And like, I try to, I, I have moved on. You know what I mean? Like I moved on. I'm married. I have another baby. My life is good. I barbecue. Like everything's great, you know, but it's, I don't remember what I was thinking about, but something reminded me of Rihanna. I remember so clearly when the pictures came out, um, with that whole thing that happened with her and Chris Brown. And the only way I can describe it was like double jumps. Like I felt like, do I jump in? Like, do I say it? Cause I had bruises all over my body at that time. Like that day, I remember being in Atlanta, sitting in the kitchen and like, and I was like, do it. And I was, and I wasn't ready to walk. I just wasn't. And so I didn't say it. And honestly, cause I'm not weak and I'm not like, I'm really private. I don't like people in my business. I felt like this is my partner. I chose this. We're going to do this. We're going to make it work. I stayed for years after that. And just you keep it moving. You know, and like I said, I'm not frail. I'm not scared. I'm not, I'm not weak. What was it that made you think of saying something? And what was it that made you not? Because seeing her. You know, before she answers this question. <laughs> Before she answers this question, we just have to assess some of the things that she said. She said that she was in the kitchen in Atlanta. She had bruises all over her body when the Chris Brown, Rihanna thing came to the forefront. That's what she said. Khalif stated that she stayed with Nas for years after the Rihanna and Chris Brown incident. Well... The Rihanna Chris Brown incident happened in 2009 and Khalees divorced Nas in 2009. So who exactly is having trouble with their memory here? <laughs> or is she just trying to use that incident to try to garner some type of support for herself? Because it's clear that she's lying. There's no doubt in my mind that she's lying about trying to associate herself with the Chris Brown and Rihanna incident. And if you Chris Brown, Chris Brown should have gave her ass a call and said, keep my name out your mouth. Don't try to rehash what I went through just so that you could try to garner some approval or some support for your bullshit cause. So it's very obvious that Khalees has mental problems, man. Once again, look it up. Don't take my word for it. She claimed that when the Chris Brown Rihanna incident happened, she was sitting in the kitchen bruised up. She thought about, quote unquote, jumping in. But she said no because... She was going to make it work with this man and they stayed together for years after that. Well, how could that be when the Chris Brown Rihanna incident happened in 2009 and you divorced Nas in 2009? So let's make this make sense. Uh, the way she looked and then looking at myself, I was embarrassed. I was appalled. I was embarrassed. I don't know that situation, but for me, it was kind of like. You're going to just let this go. You're not going to say anything. He knew it. I knew it. He looked at me like. We were both like, are you going to do it? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it was, we, we lived, we were together. He knew what it just happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want that to be my career, honestly. And not that it's hers, but I'm just saying, like, I, I wasn't ready for that move. I wasn't ready for that. We were married. We weren't dating. We weren't, like, I married this man. And there was an image of life. both of you to the world. There was. Yeah. There was. And I don't know. I, so much of me was out of character in in that marriage like taking that was is not my character so it's just it's just crazy how life pans out i didn't say anything because i wanted things to work and because i was delusional and because i thought that like i could like love past this like we can get through this when you say that we used to hit each other, is that because I have five sisters and one of my sisters, Belinda, we found out that she was being abused during the holiday. She had a broken finger. She had all these reasons. She had excuses why it happened, but she wanted she like tried to share in the blame of it all. You know, so like when you say that we used to hit each other, is that your way of I mean, discounting that he was beating you or or, or... no, what she's saying is that. We were hitting each other. In other words, I will flip out on him and put my hands on him. That's what she's trying to say. And that's all she's trying to say. She's not saying that they were engaging in mutual combat. 
She's saying, I will put my hands on him first, but she cannot say that explicitly because once again, the liberal woman cannot accept responsibility for her actions or her decisions. So she has to try to imply that um, I'm not quite sure how it happened. That's all it's about. We're trying to find a role in it. I mean, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's that. I think, look, I'm 5'10", okay? I'm 5'10", I don't back down. I'm extremely confrontational. So I take my part in it. I do. I take my part in it. You know, I wasn't. Once again, all that is, is an admission that she was the one starting the physical altercations. She said she's 5'10", and she's very confrontational. That's what she said. Once again, I'm 5'10", and I'm very confrontational. So somehow the liberal media managed to spin this into Nazir Jones was beating the shit out of a Khalees. I bet my bottom dollar that when they were having their fracases that, <laughs> that, that he was getting his ass whipped more than the other way around. I pretty much bet on that. I, like I said, I'm never painting myself as an angel. I can be a bitch. I can free, like I can fight. I know how to fight. I am not afraid to throw a punch. Now listen to all that. She says she can be a bitch. She can fight. She knows how to fight. Earlier she said that she's confrontational. Basically she's saying overall that she's the one who started all the physical altercations pretty much came out of her mouth but you know and I've said this before um, the homosexual movement has always been in league with the feminist movement so it's very commonplace for the homosexual male particularly when he's ha having a conversation with or conversing with the woman to try to assist her in the victimization mentality because remember the goal is to destroy heterosexual male hegemony that's the goal that's what they have in common Okay. But I wouldn't have started it, you know. I'll participate in ending it, but I wouldn't have started it. I was never that angry. Like the funny thing is, because I'm like a loud mouth and because I'm super opinionated, people always like I've got this image of like who I am. I adored him, like I really did, and I was never that angry. You know, he was angry and he was dark and he's always been that way. And to his credit, I will say this and I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. That man is, to this day, is exactly the man I married. He has not changed, not one iota. I changed. So for that, that was my, I grew up. I was 22 when I met him. What you take at 22 and what you take at 28 are very different. So when he was hitting... Hey brothers, did you hear that? She basically acknowledged what I stated earlier in the video. Which is that the liberal female, or the female in general, they're in a constant change throughout their life. And <laughs> you can't get caught up in the persona that they show you from day to day. That's why once again you're not supposed to quote unquote fall in love with the woman. Because they're constantly changing. She calls it growing. It's really just changing. You know, I mean, you can call it growing if you want, but they're constantly in a state of change. So that that was Nas's fault. That's not her fault. That's one thing that I agree with her about, because he should have understood that when you decide to marry a 22 year old female, exactly how far do you think that marriage is going to go in this society? Now, in other cultures, the, the female is raised to be a wife from her youth. In the ancient world, they were raised to be wives from their youth. In this society, the woman is not raised to be a wife. She's raised to be a competitor to the man. So, how long did you think that relationship was going to last? You did, you were you were still in love with him. Yeah. Yeah. We were we were in love. It, he was drunk and he would black out and he was angry and he was mad and he would be mad about things that didn't make any sense. He would be mad about who I was going to go talk to. He would be mad about if we were at an after party for the Grammys or MTV or whatever. If like, you know, if 
Jay said hi or a freaking like it's just too, I'm like I can't keep up with all of these things like these are not my battles these are your I don't even care about these people I don't care if someone says hi I'm like what up I don't give a damn I don't like any of them anyway like w- really like you know what I mean like not even personally I just don't care I don't care but yet he cares so much that like it caused a lot of conflict and then you're out and we're dressed up and there's di- I mean I have the craziest stories like the craziest stories it's ridiculous like i said i couldn't write these things i had all this jewelry well you know what brothers eventually she is going to write those things that's why she keeps talking about how she has all these crazy stories she's just waiting for the right publisher to give her the right offer and the nazir jones story is going (laughs) is going to be on the bookshelves i promise you that or at least i should say the the khalees nazir jones story it's going to be on the bookshelves no doubt about it so that's all she's waiting for. That's why she keeps talking about all the stories that she has. I forgot about it until I was just saying it. I had tons of jewelry that we had, you know, artists rent jewelry, sure. borrow jewelry, rather, for events, right? So we had a red carpet. I can't remember what, I don't remember what event it was. But I had all this, like, gorgeous jewelry. Diamond necklaces and earrings and, like, all this stuff. And so we went out and, you know, partied, got drunk, whatever. And we got into this massive fight where he like broke the door off the hinges and I was so afraid that he was gonna throw away the jewelry because it's not my jewelry. Right. So I hid the jewelry. But we were so drunk and the next morning I woke up and I was like, we got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. I was like I called I called the I called my lawyer, I called my uh, my, my business manager, because the door was off the hinges, okay? My watch was across the freaking road. This was a beach one. My watch was across the road. I was like Let me say this very quickly. It's very obvious to me that even though she accuses Nas of being the one with the memory issues, that it's most likely her who did most of the blacking out. And she's just trying to demonize him. Okay, so now I've jumped ahead to what I deem to be a relatively important part of the interview because she's just going on and on about nonsense. Let's just listen to this part and we're going to close out this video with this little blurb here. And like his freaking grandmother's in, like. Do you think he hates you though? I think it's like a love hate thing, because he doesn't know how to love. But if if for what he can what he can identify as love, I think it's like a. I think he couldn't imagine, like, this wasn't supposed to happen to us. Okay, this wasn't supposed to happen. The falling in love, the having a kid. Just, just the freaking catastrophic disaster that we became. This wasn't supposed. Well, wait a minute. How could it be that this was not supposed to happen when, according to you, you guys were in a toxic relationship, that he was dark, that he was a physical abuser, that you guys had nothing in common? So how could you say that, quote unquote, this was not supposed to happen? (laughs) What she's really saying is that you were supposed to be with me forever because we would have made a great couple. So I'm prone to believe, Nas, that... She still has some regrets about their relationship. And to be quite frank with you, it's kind of obvious to me that she just settled down with the new guy because he's an even better simp. He's a more stable minded simp than Nas. But for somebody who is admittedly as confrontational as she is, she can only be with a simp, meaning a woman worshiper. Now, sometimes simps can become violent. They can be violent because they're emotional like women. But this new guy strikes me as somebody who's more of a functional simp. But it would not shock me if Khalees has a so-called quote-unquote thug dude or a street dude on the side that she just goes and she tells the, she tells the husband, I'm going to spend the weekend at my friend's house and we're going to, you know, watch the leaves grow or some shit like that. And she's getting plowed out by somebody else. It wouldn't shock me at all. It's going to happen, yo. Like... We were we were supposed to be good. Like we were so gifted. You know what I mean? Like we were st- When she says we, she must be speaking French. Because <laughs> there's, there's nothing gifted about that woman at all. Now Nas is a gifted rapper. Khalees was never gifted at all other than in her ability to wear a lot of wild hairstyles that would influence a lot of other whores 
in the entertainment industry. That that's about it. So gifted, and it was so it was gifted and rebellious and sexy and like all these things. You know what I'm saying? Like we should have made it. Like we should have. It sucks that we didn't. I mean, I'm happy now, but like we should. Well, supposedly you're happy that it didn't work out, but why would you keep saying that you should have made it? If you're the new husband, what are you thinking about when she's sitting there talking about how she should have made it with her former uh, her former man or her other baby daddy, quote unquote? I'm, I'm sure that he's not thinking much of anything. And even if he is, he's not going to have the backbone to say much of anything because <laughs> he's a simp. How much protesting is he going to do? Unless he's ready to go two or three rounds with Khalid like Nas was. <laughs> All intents and purposes, if I were to take myself out of it to look at it, like it should, it should have worked, but it couldn't work because you've got like all these factors and all these things, and you know, and then and it's like, okay, fine, I can live with that, like I can move on. But I let go, and I didn't just say I let go, I let go, I let go, I let go, and I walked out, I walked out to save myself, to save this baby who did not deserve any of it. Like I said, night. Knight is like, you know, he really like, I. Once again, she states that she walked out to save herself and save the baby. That's interesting. Why would you leaving Nas have to do with you saving the baby, per se? You're trying to allege that just the relationship itself was that dysfunctional that the child's life was going to be in danger? I find that very strange. Because one would think that if that was the case, that, that you would not allow Nas any visitation rights whatsoever so that lends a bit of credence in my view to the notion that there's a possibility that the subject was broached that the child may have been subject to some form of sacrifice quote unquote once again everything I'm saying is alleged in regards to that and it's strictly for the brothers who can understand that notion or that sentiment right everything that I say is not for everybody say like you know i'm someone who waited a long time to have children because i wasn't like a real broody chick like i had a great life i was you know like we were touring the world we were doing everything we wanted to do i wanted for nothing you know so having a baby wasn't like my first priority you know what i mean but then when i had him and the time that i had him by the grace of god like that kid saved me really so recently i interviewed jennifer lewis and she was she was described you know, I'm going to close out this video on that last little portion of the interview with Kali stating that the child saved her. I agree with that. Why is that? Because that's what the woman is put on the earth for. The woman is put on the earth to be a wife and a mother. That's where she gets her fulfillment from. So it's incumbent upon brothers to understand that and try to foster that when it comes to the woman. Because the woman is easily misled and confused, man. With the television, with the workplace, with their idle-minded friends, so on and so forth. But anyway, peace.